friends. This evening we're going to be talking about selecting the right version of Studio 5000 Logix Designer, which is formerly called RS Logix 5000. Now, first of all, let's talk about which PLCs we may be using. Really? You, did, you couldn't turn your volume down? So I have Michael with me, and apparently he doesn't know how to turn his phone down. I don't think I, did turn, I, don't think I turned mine down either. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> before we get started, I threw something in the chat. Will you take a moment and tell me what project are you working on right now, and where are you located? And already, <laughs> we have Elrod saying, uh, mowing the lawn, waiting on his daily dose of Controls Wisdom. Well, thank you. I hope you get some nuggets out of this. Dustin Symes, good to see you. Uh, you reserving a like on this video because Tim is awesome. And these topics are always interesting. Well, I appreciate that. So yeah, tonight though, we are talking about really uh, when will we use which version of the software? So with our trainers, you have the Compact Guard Logix. This is the RA5069. And then we have the Compact Logix, which is the RA5000. And then, actually, I should have popped it in here. Let me see if I have a quick photograph. Just, yeah, I took one the other day. So, right here. The other one that you need to consider is whether you have the control logics. So, there's a picture of one of our control logics trainers. So, those are the ones that run on Studio 5000. Now, when you don't need Studio 5000 is if you have something like this Micro 800 PLC. This one right here uses Connected Components Workbench. Now, if you're bouncing back and forth between do I need Studio 5000 or Connected Components Workbench, which one should I choose? Then we already have a video on that. So if you're watching this and you're wanting to select a version of Studio 5000, at this point, we assume that you have determined that you need to learn Studio 5000 for the Compact Logix and Control Logix PLC. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the software portal. Now, before we go too far, though, let me show you where we're actually at in this lesson series. So if you go to twcontrols.com and then go to our online courses, then you're going to see the Studio 5000, RS Logix 5000 for the Control Logix, Compact Logix PLC. And this is a free course. So if you click on it, then you have the most comprehensive guide or the comprehensive guide to learning PLCs. And that's where you're going to find all the videos that we're going through right now. So we're going through a whole series from selecting our software to the basic instruction, to sequencing, to adding links over Ethernet to our IO configuration. We're just going to go a full immersive series on this. Now, what we're actually going to be looking at here is the Rockwell Software Portal. And to get there, we're just going to open a new tab and enter Rockwell Software Portal. We're going to Google it. It's the best way to find everything. And this top one is the Software Portal. I'm going to click on it. And then you're going to have the Visit Software Subscription Portal. Now, I have created a login here. I just created this a little bit ago because... A lot of people tell me, well, you can't actually use the software portal. Michael, am I? oh, I can just make this screen a little smaller. That, that'll that get us there. Look at that. I, I didn't even need Michael's help. I just realized you, um, because of the little screen there, you couldn't see. But yeah, so this says no portal. Uh, that's because, yeah, I just wanted one that way you could realize without any, you know, distributor agreements or anything, you can go find the software that you need for Studio 5000. And then we could scroll forever, but if you've ever been to my class, you know I hate it when you all scroll. So we're going to hit a Control F for find, and we're going to type Logix Designer, and you're going to be left with a few of them. And we're going to find Studio 5000 Automation Engineering and Design Environment. And that's the one we're going to click on. And then right away, we're going to see our um, calls for the different options. So we have service edition, mini edition, light edition, and so forth. And we're going to talk through a few of these. Now, first of all, I have a very strong opinion of service edition. It, it's kind of funny. I'm going to pick on Robert, uh, Robert Daggett a little bit. Uh, Robert said he likes service edition in one of my com or one of my posts. He said he likes service edition because you could download, toggle, and force. And I said, I don't like Service Edition because you can download, toggle, and force. 
And really, my, my objection to Service Edition is you're giving someone just a small peek into the software, but you're not teaching them enough not to be dangerous. So if you want someone not to mess up when they're troubleshooting the machine, then you want them fully understanding the software. And I don't think you can get there with Service Edition. And I get, I, I, I get um, chuckle a lot of times. I'll get somebody that's like, yeah, I, I want to send someone to your training, but we don't want them to fully understand the PLC software. And I'm like, so you want them to be able to troubleshoot half the machines? What exactly are you saying there? So I'm not a fan of Service Edition, but what it allows you to do is simply upload and download. And then, yeah, it has some forces and toggles, which, you know, maybe that works for you. Maybe it doesn't. But especially if you're using one of our trainers, do not purchase this option. It is has zero use for you. Now, the two that I really think most of you are going to be in is the Studio 5000 Mini Edition and the Studio 5000 Lite Edition. I think this covers the bulk of you. So what on all of these, you have a little detailed selection information. Click here. We're going to click on that. And then if we go down a little bit on page, what is that? Page four. Page four has a good breakdown of what I really, the questions I ask you every time when um, you're asking me which one to select. So here's the service edition, the one I've already said I would not do. And it says upload down view only. So that's pretty much all that thing has. Now, the ladder, the um, the mini edition, the big thing about it is it's ladder only. And then the mini, I mean the light edition, it's going to give you function block diagrams, structured text, sequential function lock, and the guard logic safety editor. So Let's talk about one other thing because I blew up over it. I do it every time is there is one little hitch that we need to look at on page three. So controller support. All editions support the compact, I mean the control, the compact logics and the compact guard logics family of controllers. So any of these we can use with this PLC or, oh, I just had it in my hand. There we go. Or this PLC, they work fine. So these are, this is the compact guard logics. This is your compact logic. So that's what they mean when they say that. Now it says that we read on professional full standard network standard and service edition support the compact, the compact guard. And then it includes the control logics and the guard logics platform. So that's when you need, the, you'll need that for the bigger rack based controllers. But after that, really the question you need to ask yourself is, do you want to learn just ladder logic or do you want to learn all the other languages? Now, that's what do you want to learn today? Or should I say, what do you need to learn today? Because one cool thing is we're going to look in a little bit and you're going to see that you actually, you, you know, most of these are yearly subscriptions now. Now you can buy all the software outright. And honestly, I've, I've worked the math a couple of times. It takes about three and a half years to really get a payback on buying the software outright, you know, three and a half to four and a half years. Well, do you know for sure that your needs won't change over that time? So kind of my thought is first, you know, first let's talk a little bit about which one you should learn first. I would 100% think that you should learn lighter logic first. That has nothing to do with which one is the best option as far as programming. It's the one that you're going to see the most out in the field. Excuse me. So 90% of your applications that are in the field today are ladder logic. So 100%, you should learn ladder logic first. So how long is that going to take you? I mean, is this going to be, are you planning on, you know, putting your head down and plowing through this in a month? Or is this going to be over a certain amount of time? So these are just some things to think about. And after that, we can start looking kind of at the pricing here. And I love that Rockwell has made this price in public. So you know, a lot of people tell me, well, Rock, you know, Studio 5000 costs $10,000. I can't afford that. I'm like, no, it doesn't. So right here, this mini edition, and I'll tell you that the bulk of you starting out your first year, this mini edition gets you exactly where you need to be. So this supports ladder logic only, and it supports the compact logics controllers. 
Now the light addition, that one adds the function block diagrams, the structured text, and it also does your safety editor for the compact guard logics. No control logics or guard logic support. So this right here, $418 a year, whoops, for the mini, or you can go with $1,000 a year for light edition. There are also some of you that may need one of the legacy editions. At that point, you need to really talk to your distributor. And I do recommend that you go through your distributor to purchase this just so you can start building a relationship with them. But those two right there really get you most of it. Now, the next one to look at if you do need the control logics is the Studio 5000 Standard Edition. So if we go back down here, and up here it said professional full standard stand or standard network standard and service editions all support mainly the control logics and guard logics and so down here that is these right here these support the control logics plc and so standard is only going to be ladder again and then we have standard with networks. That gives you the RS networks if you're using mainly device net or control net. Um, I think there is an Ethernet one. I've never even played with it. And then Fool's going to start adding back in our logics editor, or our own function block diagram and our sequential function charts and structure text and all that. So light gets you to here. If you look over, that means professional and full gets you also to there. Now, you also have the phase manager and the sequence manager. I can be honest, I have not worked with them much. I've only seen a few programs that actually have them used, so I can't tell you a lot about them. But the one thing is the PID auto-tune. Notice that it was included up to version 32, and now it is separate. And a lot of you are doing process control. That's going to be something that you may want to um, consider getting. But... For now, I'm going to say if you're using one of our trainers or you're out there learning and you're sure that you need the control logic or need to learn about the control logics and compact logics, then one of these two right here is probably going to be it. Now, if we go ahead and select one of those, I'm going to select many of this just so we can talk about it a little bit. Is it says here $418 a year and one that gives you eight to five support, which is, that's very valuable right there. I mean, you're getting to talk to some of the most knowledgeable people on the product, you know, that that can be worth, you know, it doesn't take but one machine being down and you being stumped to uh, probably pay for that. That's if you're using the subscription. Now, you also have perpetual with maintenance. And what that means is for $1,000, you can buy this software outright. But there's also an annual cost. And so this gives you, one, your 8 to 5 support, which is very important. But it also gives you all your firmware upgrades. And I'm going to say that, for the most part, you need to keep your software in support. Because, again, you know, get, getting access to be able to download and upgrade your firmwares when you need to, that can be really important. You don't want to be stuck on the phone with a distributor trying to get access really fast to one of them. But once you have your software selected and installed, then you're ready to um, to start programming your PLC. So one, if you haven't already, do the video on making sure that you need to um, actually purchase Studio 5000. A lot of you are probably watching this video. You may be still on the fence. And at that point, you may need to consider Connected Components Workbench. And let me let me go ahead and show you where you can find that video. That would be a smart move, wouldn't it, Michael? Maybe. Maybe? Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I can't even find my mouse right now. There we go. So if we go back to TW Controls, there's a little area here. Because, you know, sometimes, I, and I've started building this one out, sometimes I have some things that don't really fit into a course. So I made an area called Tim's Thoughts. And right down here, we see Studio 5000 versus Connected Components Workbench, choosing the right Rockwell Automation software. And so this one, I give you some, well, mostly opinions. Everything in this Tim Stoltz area is definitely opinions. But, you know, try the way you get the most effective use of your money. And, you know, Connected Components Workbench is free. So that can give you a lot of marketable job skills. Now, if you have somewhere that's saying, no, we definitely need to learn Studio 5000, then you're definitely right there on that. All right. So that is the main part for this evening's live stream. So... 
We're going to be doing these. I'm not exactly, I can't promise you every week because we also have training weeks and on the training week, I can't be here, but we're going to start going through a lot of the courses that we already have, but updating them a little bit, but also these are going to be long burns. So last year we made the Connecticut Punnett's workbench course comprehensive guide to learning PLCs, which y'all all said you really love. So these are all long, deep dives into topics that you commonly ask me about. And so we're going to do that same thing on the Studio 5000 now. As you're starting your school year for a lot of you, we're going to go through it right with you. So really our first one was selecting the vert, you know, your Studio 5000. And that kind of combines these that we had right here. And then the next one will be wiring. So in our next live stream, we're actually going to go through wiring and not just wiring it right. We're actually going to go through wiring it wrong too, because in a recent um, class, uh, we ha uh, had an instructor here and she said, she says, you know, you show how to wire it right, but could you, could you show us how to get through some of the pitfalls when things don't work the way they were supposed to? So that'll be the next big one. And then we're going to go through communications. You know, how do you get your IP address configured and all those fun things? And then we'll start going through some ladder logic. So after this live stream's over, I'll put a playlist right here that shows you how to get to your next sources. And I'll see you over there.